Today we will discuss about central dogma of molecular biology. The central dogma of molecular biology explains the flow of genetic information from DNA to RNA and to make a functional product called protein. Actually our DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid contains genes that determine that who you are. So how can this organic molecule control your characteristics? Actually DNA contains instructions for all the proteins your body makes. Then proteins in turn determine the structure and function of your cells. So what determine the protein structure actually? It begins with the sequence of amino acid that make up the protein and instruction for making proteins. So how the instructions in the DNA get to the site of protein synthesis outside the nucleus? Actually there is an other type of nucleic acid is responsible and this nucleic acid is ribonucleic acid or RNA. RNA is the molecule that squeezed through the pores in the membrane and it carries the information from DNA to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm and then it helps to assemble the protein. So discovering this sequence of events was a major milestone in molecular biology and it is called central dogma of molecular biology. Now first we will discuss DNA replication. DNA replication is actually the process where DNA make a copy of itself during cell division and DNA replication is a semi-conservative. In semi-conservative model newly synthesized molecule contain one parent template strain and one new daughter strain. Actually there were three models suggested for DNA replication First is conservative, semi-conservative, and the third is dispersive. In semi-conservative method of replication, it suggests that the parental DNA remains together and the newly formed daughter strand are also together. While in semi-conservative method of replication, it suggests that two parental DNA strand serve as a template for the new DNA and after replication each double stranded DNA contains one parental strand and one new daughter strand. But in dispersive method of replication they suggest that after replication the two daughter DNA have alternating segment of both parental and newly synthesized DNA interpersed in both strands. So to confirm this semi-conservative method of replication later on Mizerzen and Starr performed an experiment. Mizerzen and Starr experimented with E. coli cells and grown first in heavy nitrogen and 15 and then in light nitrogen and 14 the dna that grown in n15 red band is heavier than dna that grown in n14 medium and the sediment to a lower level in the cesium chloride density gradient in an ultra centrifugation so when dna in the n15 is then switched to a media containing N14 then after one round of cell division the DNA sediment half way between the N15 and N14 level that indicate that it now contains 50% and 15 and 50% and 14 so in subsequent cell division an increasing amount of DNA containing N14 only. Therefore, this data suggests 
the semi-conservative replication model. DNA replication consists of three steps, initiation, elongation, and termination. First, we will see what actually happens in initiation process. The first step in DNA replication is to unzip the double helix structure of DNA molecule. So, this is carried out by the enzyme called DNA helicase and it breaks the hydrogen bond that hold the complementary bases of DNA together. So the separation of two single strands of DNA create a Y-shaped card replication fork and then single-stranded binding protein binds to this single-stranded region and protect it from breakage and also prevent it from renaturing. As the parental DNA is unwound by DNA helicase enzyme and single-stranded binding protein, the resulting supercoiling occurs in this DNA. So here another enzyme comes called DNA gyrase enzyme. It induces transient single-strand break and removes the supercoiling. Next is elongation. So now the primer attached to the single-stranded DNA and the DNA polymerase 3 enzyme comes and extend the RNA primer made by primase and the DNA polymerase also possesses a catalytic site for polymerization and degradation of nucleic acid strand. And here DNA polymerase make DNA from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So here on the template strand with 3 prime to 5 prime orientation, a new DNA molecule that is made continuously in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction is the leading strand and it synthesized continuously. While on the other hand, on the template strand with 5 prime to 3 prime orientation. Here multiple primers are synthesized at the specific site by primase and then DNA polymerase 3 enzyme synthesizes short pieces of new DNA molecule in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So these small fragments that are synthesized discontinuously, these are called Okazaki fragment. And the new DNA strand which is discontinuously synthesized, they are called lagging strand. So after DNA synthesis by DNA polymerase 3, then DNA polymerase enzyme 1 comes and it uses its 5 prime to 3 prime exon nucleus activity and they remove the short RNA primer and fits the gap between DNA. Then finally, DNA ligase enzyme joins the end of the DNA fragment together. In termination, the two replication forks that meet at 180 degrees C opposite to the origin of replication. As the DNA is circular in prokaryote and around this region there are several terminator sites which arrest the movement of the fork by binding to its TUS gene product. TUS gene is actually an inhibitor of DNA helicase enzyme and then once the replication is complete then the two DNA molecules that are circular they remain interlinked and they form the catenated structure and then topoisomerase 4 enzyme comes and it cut it to unlink these DNA molecules. Now the DNA molecules becomes separated. So the result of DNA replication is two DNA molecules consisting of one new strand and one old chain of nucleotide 
and this is why DNA replication is described as semi-conservative. Half of the chain is part of the original DNA, while half is brand new DNA. So, it's all about termination.